How's everyone doing tonight? Everyone doing good? Yeah. So unlike uh, unlike the past performers, I'm just gonna choose to do a little stand-up comedy because uh, I cannot sing for the life of me. I've learned that very young. Uh, how's everyone doing tonight? Everyone doing very good? Yeah. Not gonna lie, I am so happy I'm performing here today. I mean, I'm in the school I go to, I'm seeing so many familiar faces, I love it. I'm also happy I don't have to perform in some grody bar in Rochester I don't know. And I've realized that after going there, every single time I go to Rochester, I go under my will. I don't know if you guys ever noticed, like everyone glamorizes Rochester. They're like, Rochester, oh my God, it's a city. Now, let me tell you guys something. Rochester's just Buffalo on layaway, okay? <laughs> let me tell you guys. Rochester kind of reminds me, compared to other cities in New York, Rochester kind of reminds me of that one ugly sweater you get from your grandma on your birthday. And you never want to wear it in public, ever. But when you're home alone and you're cold in your house, you're like, eh, might as well throw it on. So you put it on and you check yourself in the mirror and you're like, God damn, this shit is uglier than I thought it was. Why would I have put this on? But thank you guys for coming out tonight's open mic. Uh, tonight's set is called Reckless Behavior. Reason why it's called Reckless Behavior is because I'm the definition of reckless. Literally, if you go into a dictionary and you open the word reckless, you're gonna see, a word, you're gonna see the name Russell Keys with a picture of his goofy ass face. You know you're reckless when your own third grade teacher literally nicknames you Reckless Russell. She nicknamed me that after I bit into the kickball and popped it in third grade. She's like, why would you do that? I'm like, I don't know, it looked like an apple, I wanted to eat it. You also know you're reckless when your own elementary school principal literally quits because of you. Now she didn't tell me that back then, but looking back on it now, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's why. I mean, I was seeing her every Friday. It was to the point I was seeing her and grabbing lunch. It was to the point we were having a first name basis. Matter of fact, it was to the point she had Dear Mrs. Keys written on a stamp. Dear Mrs. Keys, your kid kicked the kid's shin in kickball. Stamp. Dear Mrs. Keys, your kid gave another son a wedgie on the bus. Stamp. She didn't care. She's like, you know what? Fuck this kid and fuck this school. I'm out of here. I don't want to go here. Not gonna lie, people, I've known since the day I was 13 years old, I'd be reckless. From, the, from that point on, I knew, you know what? I'm gonna be reckless from the, day, from the day I die. You know how most people, you know how most people drive to work? Yeah, I drive into work. <laughs> Let me tell you guys something. This happened when I worked at Domino's. Worst four months of my entire fucking existence. For those of you, I recommend never working in the food industry, all right? Unless you wanna be treated like a slave your entire shift. So I was working at Domino's one night, and I was driving back from an order, and immediately I was told to do another order. So I'm going up, and I go back to Domino's, and I pull up to this little glass window in the side of the employee entrance. And I get out of my car, and I'm thinking, my car, I'm gonna leave my car on, I'm gonna be right back in, and I'm gonna be right back on the road, smooth as shit, thinking I'm gonna be right back with the flash. I get out of my car thinking, thinking it's in park, and I see it moving, and in my head, I'm like, I don't know if it's the edibles I took or those things are actually moving. And when I saw the car moving, I decided to turn into Jackie Robinson, sliding into home base, and I decided to try and hit every single thing on the car floor except the damn brakes. Matter of fact, I was doing it like I was doing the fucking bull by Pop Smoke. And by the time I actually hit the brakes, I fucking hit the glass door. And then my supervisor, Blaine, fuck that guy, by the way, Blaine walks up and the first thing he says to me, you know what this goofy motherfucker says to me? He walks up and he's like, well, looks like more paperwork for me. In my head, I'm like, what do you mean more paperwork for you? You work at a damn Domino's, Blaine. Like, you're not a stockbroker in Wall Street. Calm down, buddy. You're doing pizzas for a living, man. Let me tell you guys. You can also be reckless without physically being reckless. When I was at Domino's, they also wanted me to work the phones, probably because they didn't want me to uh, drive anymore. I don't, I don't know. But they wanted me to work the phones after that night. And every single time I'd be working the phones, most times I'd be getting a big ass order. I'm talking about, can I get nine pizzas, eight cheesy breads, six brookies, four spinach dips? And I'd be looking at them like, motherfucker, what are you going to the electric chair? But I'd be thinking about it, be like, why are you ordering that much shit? And half the time I'd be like, yep. Uh-huh, uh-huh, 
Uh huh. I'm sorry, sir. The phones aren't working too well. You're gonna have to come in and order that shit. Click. I don't wanna hear that shit. I mean, come on. Why are you ordering that much food on a Tuesday afternoon at two o'clock? Calm down, buddy. Let me tell you guys something. I do not like working in the fast food industry. I've learned that after that in the hard way, all right? Working in the fast food industry is the worst thing possible. But I also knew that I'm reckless in relationships. I'm reckless with seeing myself in other people's shoes. You know you're gonna have a great bond with your best friend's father when you hit his truck with your own car. <laughs> True story, people, I shit you not. I was driving, I was driving the first week I got my car. Junior year, I was happy as shit. I felt like Dale Earnhardt Jr. half the time, going 30 miles an hour. I felt sh like fast as shit. And when I got my car, I was picking up my best friend to go to the gym. Picked him up, and I saw, my, I saw my best friend's dad doing yard work. So I'm backing up, and I want to talk to him as I'm backing up. And as I'm backing up, I back up into his goddamn truck. But you guys don't know what my best friend's dad looks like. This guy looks like the rock on steroids, and I don't know how the fuck that's possible. This guy could pick me up and throw me to Jupiter. He could pick me up like a damn spider. So in my head, I'm like, holy shit, holy shit, what did I do? I'm so sorry. He didn't give a shit. From now on, all he just says is, yo, truck boy, watch out for that shit, stupid. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Harold. Way, way to give me a vote of confidence. Let me tell you guys something. I'm also reckless with first impressions because when you meet me, you will either love me or hate me. There is zero in between. Zero in between when you first meet me, people. I shit you not. When I, when I first moved out of Harmon to Benedict, I had to deal with going, I had to deal with a new RA, new people, new RA, new everything. And when me and my roommates decided one night, they're like, hey, let's go down to the basement. So we decided to go down to the basement one night. So me and my roommates, we went down to the basement and then we went back and we just chilled five minutes in the basement and we went back up five minutes later, thinking we'd be fine. Get a knock on the door about two in the morning. My, me, mind you, I did not know that this was my RA. She knocks on the door, she's like, where the fuck's your roommate? I'm like, who are you talking to? She's like, where are your roommates? I grab my roommates, and she's like, why the hell were you guys in the basement? And I'm like, why are you talking to me like a damn federale? Like, what, do you got a warrant for my arrest? Like, I'm sorry, I can't go in the basement I live in. Let me tell you guys, after, after that conversation, I was like, you know what, fuck this. So she's like, okay, goodbye, have a good night. I'm like, yeah, you have a good night too, you bitch. Slammed the door thinking I was hot shit. My roommates look at me and they're like, that was our RA, you fucking idiot. I'm like, guess I ruined my first impression. Let me tell you, that RA didn't want to work in our building anymore, so she moved. Mostly because of me, I imagine. But we got a new RA. And let me tell you, my, set, my first impression with her probably went, went worse than the first impression. So first First day of second semester moving, the first day of second semester moving, people, we were moving in and we were driving back, me and my friend, we were driving back from Wegmans. We were driving back and we were trying to find a parking spot. And let me tell you, I made a great bond with this new RA because I know the best way to meet your RA is by hitting her boyfriend's car for the first time. <laughs> So we were driving back from Wegmans one day and we were trying to find a parking spot. We've tried to find a very small parking spot and I'm like, you know what, this works. She's like, Russell, I don't think you're gonna fit. I'm like, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. I know we can fit. And as I'm turning, boom, we hit the car. And as soon as we hit the car, I'm looking at me, I'm looking eye to eye with her goofy ass boyfriend for like 15 seconds. And I'm like, what the hell do I do? So I slowly back up thinking I'm gonna be okay. So I think, okay, let me go to the next parking lot. Well, my dumbass went to the one that was a thousand feet away from his car. And then I did what my grandma taught me, lovely lady. I do what she taught me and I follow her life advice all the time. She says, when you do something wrong, you walk forward, don't say anything, act like you didn't do shit and just keep moving. <laughs> so I was like, okay, you know what we're gonna do? We are going to get out of the car, keep walking, act like we didn't do shit and just make conversation with me. So I'm like, get out of the car, just walk straight, walk straight. She's like, okay, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I'm like, please, just walk straight. And don't look at them. She was looking at them. So, and then about 10 minutes later, I go back to my room. 
And my roommates are like, all right, Russell, you want to go to Walmart with us? We're, we're going to be about 10 minutes. I'm like, no, I'm good. And they're like, all right, just don't fuck up. I'm like, okay. That was their mistake for leaving me alone. <laughs> then about two minutes later, I decided to go to the bathroom. As I'm going to the bathroom, I get a knock on the door. UP, we're here for Russell Keys. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, will you let me wipe my ass first? And I'm trying to wipe my ass, but I can't do it. So I get out, and I'm just like, this is him. He's like, all right, bring your coat. We're gonna be a while. So I bring my coat, and I'm going outside, and I'm getting, I'm going to the car. He's like, son, did you hit this person's car? And I look at the car, I'm like, I don't think I did. <laughs> he's like, all right, well, let's go, let's go to, uh, let's go to this guy. Let's go to your car. So he looks at my car, he's like, all right, son, there's clearly damage. Let's see your license and registration. So I open my car door, immediately the cop gets hit in the face with weed. And right then and there, I'm like, dear God, please, please let Earth hit us with a meteorite. Please let the meteorite just hit us and hit Earth and just let Earth just vanish into thin air, please. He's like, and I'm just panicking at this point. And he's like, son, let me get the, let me get the marijuana. So I hand him the marijuana, I'm like, officer, I'm a crook. Here's my, here's my weed, take me to jail, I'm so sorry. He's like, all right, son. Put, let's go in the back of the cop car. So I'm chilling in the back of the cop car for about 10, 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes. And in that unfortunate 20 minutes, I have to see about 30 people from my residence hall look at me in the back of a cop car. And then after that, I have to explain why I was in the back of a cop car. But most importantly, I saw every single one of my roommates and I had to look at them eye to eye while I was in the back of a cop car. And then when I got back in the room, the first thing that they said to me after that traumatizing experience wasn't, are you okay? Is everything all right? They're like, we gave you 10 minutes, bro. How the hell could you fuck that up? Thank you very much for your time, everybody.